Locked On Rays, your daily Tampa Bay Rays podcast, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hello, my name is Kevin Weiss. I'm Ulysses Zambrano. Host of Locked On Rays, part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Thank you for making the Locked On Rays podcast your first listen every day. And remember, Locked On Rays is free and available on all platforms, including YouTube at Locked On Rays. Also, be sure to follow us on Twitter and Instagram at Locked On Rays. And you can email us anytime, Locked On Rays at gmail.com. Kevin, you say that in mm-hmm. every episode, right? Thank you for making us your first listen. I just want to say we really do mean that. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to us and, and being with us while we just are two friends talking about baseball mm-hmm. and about the team that we, we like. So thank you so much. I, we've we've gotten some DMs lately and 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 the views on our YouTube channel ha- have increased. Uh, so that's you guys supporting what we yes. do. And that is just the coolest thing. So again, thank you so much. And I think we're up to 147 subscribers on so YouTube. So close. Can we make it to 150 people? Can It'd we make nice. it? It'd be nice. It would be nice if we got to 150 before the conclusion of the weekend. It would be really nice to do that. Uh, also, man, you talk about this is the time where uh, baseball media writers, reporters, whatever it may be, they're starting to hurt. They're starting to hurt a little bit oh, because yeah. there is not really going to be any movement in the lockout subject until I think after the new year. You know that there is an issue with finding things to talk about and write about when Mark Topkin is tweeting out Rule Five minor league draft picks. Not the not the major league version of the Rule Five draft, but the minor league version. Uh, the Rule 5 draft. It would be interesting to see if Intern McGee could pull up Mark Topkins' tweets every yeah. year and then see if he actually has done that every year. Because if he has, okay, no mm-hmm. sweat from, from, from here. But if he hasn't, well, yeah. then, then, then you know, it's content. And yes. you know what? The race got poached a little bit. Yeah, no. Yeah, no. Let, let's not? be honest. What, what kind of impact was Kenny Rosenberg, Alex Valverde, and Michael Gigliotti really going to make at the end of the day? Rosenberg's kind of an intriguing player, Thank but you. I don't... I mean, if he was that big of a player, he would have been added to the 40-man, I feel like. 30 and two-thirds innings, a 235 ERA. I don't see a lot of problems with, with the, the walks, which is, which is nice, honestly. Uh, but... Just be- just because you put up good numbers in AAA does not mean you can necessarily translate, translate it to no, the big leagues. But I-, I do feel like that was the biggest piece that they lost. Yes. And uh, honestly, I hope he uh, he he does well. I-, I think the guy from Locked On Angels had him on. So really, yeah. So good for Steve for for getting in contact with Kenny Rosenberg and and, and uh, a guy who's active on Twitter. So hopefully he has a, a nice uh, spot there because. If the Angels need something, yeah. it would be pitching. And if you are smart, which I guess the Angels are trying to be lately, right. with picking every every guy in, in the draft to be a pitcher, they know their flaws. And now picking mm-hmm. a pitcher that's just basically going to waste away in AAA for the race? No. Yeah. Here, come home and, and, let, and let us use you. Good for the Angels. Right. And But again, like this idea that, oh, we lost Kenny Rosenberg. What are we going to do? Let, I mean, let's shut the franchise down. No, no, I don't think anybody's saying that, but I think it's... I've seen a couple. Oh my gosh, the Rays have gotten poached. <laughs> you lost three guys and you haven't heard of two of them. And you probably haven't heard of the third either. Well, I feel like Kenny Rosenberg is a guy that it's nice to... He's just like a Dietrich Hens. Okay. Can, can I be frank here? Here's what Kenny Rosenberg is most, most famous for. Okay. One, uh, an entertaining, funny Twitter account. Yes. Two, I mean, Kevin Cash thought he was Rich Hill in spring training. That, that's, that's what we're dealing fault. with here. That's not his fault. That's not his fault. He just looks like the guy. Not really, though. I mean, I, I don't think I, from a Kevin farm, Cash maybe. had no idea who Kenny Rosenberg does, was or does, is, and he probably still does. Does Kevin Cash wear contacts? Maybe he didn't have him on. You're a contacts a guy. That is true. You can yeah. tell when I'm not wearing contacts on the podcast when I'm really leaning into the camera. <laughs> and if you don't know, uh, I don't have contacts on and, right now. And if you don't know this, then you can just. Subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah. There you go. Uh, question. Okay. So 
the, the Rays go into a deep no. diatribe about the minor league rule five draft, but let's be frank and let's be honest here. The combined war uh, of Alex Valverde, Mike Gigliotti, and Kenny Rosenberg, what, what are we, what are we going to set that at? Like 0.2? Oh, no. Don't, don't be. Why are you being this mean? Look, I think it's it's it, it would be okay, and I hope that they all complete a war of 10. Yes, but the like the vast vast majority of Rule Five minor league picks. Yes, no. it's AAA fodder yeah, essentially. Yeah, minor league depth pieces. That's it. Sure, but Kenny Rosenberg plus company. That's what should yeah. tell you. Um, yeah, I mean it's 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 not going to break the bank, but I, I feel like once again, just by getting these three guys off yeah. the race system, the race keep proving like Baseball America did, and, and naming right. them the top organization in 2021, that if they're going to take talent from a team, mm -hmm. it's going to be the race. And I, I know that maybe they don't ever, you know, cross the point three war, like you said, but right. the fact that it's from the race that get that gets picked, honestly, yeah. you can see it as a silver lining that, yeah, it sucks that your talent is, is being taken away, but also your talent is being taken away because it's good. Yeah, that's the one thing I will say. This is again, I'm I'm not shedding a tear that the Rays have lost these three players. Not by any means. In fact, I thought you know, we were gonna get poached more. I thought maybe five, six, seven. Yeah. If no. that, you know. Yeah. So, but I think the thing that is not worrisome, but it's like really, uh, is that the the Rays and organizations as good as the Rays put so much time, effort, and energy into the development and progression of these players. Yeah. And then another organization mm -hmm. like the Angels, the Mets, or the Giants, whoever it may be, can just come in and poach that player for $25,000. Yeah. It's almost, you could almost look at it, if you're like not a really good organization at developing talent and player development, you could almost use that as a market inefficiency of like, we're just going to leave a couple spots open on our AAA roster so we can just pick teams from the Dodgers, pick teams from the Rays, pick teams, for, uh, pick players from the Brewers. Like, just I'm go, sure that we'll, they we'll do. take your guys. Uh, we, we suck at, at making our players good. Let's just go after these guys in these organizations. MLB is filled with these loopholes, and that's yeah. why we find ourselves in a lockout where there are so many loopholes that people are like, okay, enough of this mm -hmm. enough with tanking because that's another one right oh yeah. how can we put well you know you you go and win 58 games and get the number one pick yes i mean that that's ridiculous what the diamondbacks and the, and the orioles are doing so yeah there are many loopholes i don't think that uh you know these teams that are leaving a couple spaces open in the triple a roster don't know about that right they definitely are doing that. yeah uh, maybe, and again, I'm not trying to crap on Kenny Rosenberg. I think he's he's a fun player for sure. I just don't think he's going to be a superstar by any means or an impact player. But one thing that might be able to help him out a little bit, maybe give him that little extra boost now that he's in LA. Yeah, uh, built bar. Maybe maybe that's all he needs to become a major league rostered player. Maybe Kevin, do you have a fla a, a, a favorite flavor from Built Bar? By the way, I've never uh, asked you like this. all of them. Come all on. of them. Okay, well, because there's so many flavors, right? Yeah. You have a hard time choosing. Is it raspberry, mint brownie, cherry, or double chocolate? You never really know. And but the thing that you do know is that Built Bar gives you that extra fuel you need to bust down those mall doors and battle all the holiday shoppers. But I will say this, Kevin, mm -hmm. it can get a little bit tense. When you're talking to family about some subjects, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe built bar flavors could be that subject. So don't tell anybody on the Christmas and during the holidays what your favorite flavor is because it could get contentious there. You That's know? true. So to keep that to yourself. And if you want to keep something for yourself, it shouldn't be the promo code because the promo code gets you 15% off your built bar order. So you go to built.com. Right, and you choose all your flavors. You don't tell your family your flavor. No, no, no. You keep that to yourself. <laughs> Let's not get turkey thrown around in the dinner table. And then you tell them, but this is the promo code. It's locked fifteen. It gets you fifteen percent off your Built Bar order. So go today to Built.com, get your Built Bar flavors, and use promo code locked fifteen. You know what? I think Built Bar would be a great stocking stuffer. Ooh. And I think another great stocking stuffer would be Stance Apparel. Why not? Yeah. Stance Apparel represents a radical reinvention of socks, underwear, and active apparel. They have a sharp focus on comfort, quality, and creativity. 
bringing an atypical aesthetic alongside some of pop culture's hottest collaborators for the ultimate in style and self-expression. There's collaborations with Wu-Tang Clan, Batman, The Goonies, Star Wars, The Office, Harry Potter, lots of good things. Of course, professional sports as well. Yeah, we see uh, Ulysses is a huge Harry Potter fan with the Gryffindor t-shirt. Uh, hang on. Gryffindor? Yes. Come on, you got this. Oh, boy. I trust you. In the middle of a live read. I don't know if I can do this. <laughs> the, the one with the snake, Slytherin. There you go. Hufflepuff. Oh, my gosh. And so there's close. one more. Yes. This is like the Beatles. Yes. I can't get that fourth one. That's okay. Gryffindor. Slytherin. Hufflepuff. And wow. Ravenclaw. Yes. Baltimore gonna... Ravenclaw. Let's there we go. go. Baby. Wow. <sighs> the fact I got that. I mean... It, I, I think it was just because I had a built bar yes. uh, not too long ago before the show. So that's why I'm so amped up here. Yes. So uh, where were we? Oh, yes, yeah, Stance. Stance believes that the perfect fit matters more than fitting in, that those who feel good do good. Go see for yourself. Register for an account at stance.com and get 15% off your first purchase. Use the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N. That's L O C K E D O N at checkout to apply. Enjoy the color and comfort of a life less ordinary with Stance. Kevin, I was talking to longtime listener mm -hmm. Austin Holloway, and he gave me a little prop that uh, that I want you to uh, answer for for both both of us and for everybody okay. listening. You know, you take the over or under or on the dot on Vidal Brujan mm -hmm. playing as many games as Wander Franco did in 2021. Wander Franco played 70. So will Vidal Brujan play 70 games under or over? 70 games with the Rays or just 70 games in the big leagues in 2022? Big league team. Okay, so it doesn't necessarily have to be with the race. Oh boy! Oh my! I'm just throwing that out there. Oh boy! That, that, that I, I thought this was just going to be a simple yes or no. You're you're throwing the whole. This is a whole segment now. I know. I I will say yes. Okay. I will say yes. I will take under. Yeah, I will, I will say no. Okay. Why is that? I feel like there's a, a little bit of a hierarchy right now with the three guys. You know, you, you got Taylor Walls, you got Josh Lowe, and you got Vidal Bruhan. Mm -hmm. Barring a lot of extra moves that the the race could do, I feel like now with the Wendell move, Taylor Walls is that guy. Right. right. So he takes the place of Joey Wendell for all intents and purposes. Now you gotta have you have a a, a glut in the outfield, right? You right. Meadows, Rosarena, KK, Phillips, Margot. Yeah. You can't put Josh Lowe unless one of those guys gets moved. That's true. Maybe even two of them. So yeah. So then Josh Lowe gets second. And then Vidal Bruhan, I feel like he comes after Josh because Josh had a mm -hmm. better season with the bat than, right. than Vidal Bruhan. So I feel like he's third in line. So in order to get 70 games, there has to be injuries, which I don't right. want that to happen. And maybe a, a couple traits more has to happen. So yeah. I feel like 70 is just a little bit too much. Well, I think it's close, though. Yeah, I think that couple things. I'm fully expecting Kevin Kiermeyer to not be on the team mm. this upcoming year, and fully expecting another guy or two. Okay, that we, you know, who knows what's happening with Brett Phillips? Who knows what's happening? Quite frankly, with an Austin Meadows yeah. type, and I think the injuries thing could be a big part of it as well. I mean, the Rays. Uh, I, I know many of the injuries have happened on the pitching end of things, but right, are, are we going to be so lucky with? Brandon Lau staying healthy for a full season. Some of these other guys yeah. staying healthy for a full season. So that's a little bit. Mike Zunino. I mean, did yeah. he even get hurt? I mean, a lot of pl right. decision players didn't really get hurt. Now, wasn't Vidal Bruhan called up before Josh Lowe? Yes, he was. Okay. Yes, he was. Yeah. So I am, I, I do he, wonder. At that time, he was having a better season with the bat. Okay. And Josh, Josh turned it on and Vidal kind of had a, a dip. I mean, he started off really, really hot. Vidal did. Even yeah. Better than Wander. Um, so that's why I'm saying, like, if you look at the whole 2021 season, Josh ended the, the his offensive numbers better right. than Vidal. That's fair, but I also think that the the vast versatility of Brujan helps in his favor. That it's not like, oh, only he can only play second base or he can only play right field. Like he yeah. can play five, six different positions. Yes, he if can. it comes down to that. Yeah. 
So it'll be and, interesting. Yeah. Again, I don't even know necessarily if Vidal Bruhan's going to be on the team. If he 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 very well could be traded trades yeah. before the start of the season. So if he's with another team, I I certainly would think that if the team is that gung right. ho to trade for that player, then he would play more than 70 games. I How many games did he even play with the Rays this past season? I think Not like many. 10 games. 10 Not games many, at, yeah. at most, yeah. Uh, it was a pretty underwhelming uh, yeah. MLB. Like, we can't judge him on those 10 games no. with, the, with the Rays. It would be the definition of a, sa- a small sample size. But I will tell you this. The trade bait is, of course, a possibility because if you are looking at the top three things that the Rays needed, you needed a veteran starter. Boom. Mm-hmm. Got it. Kluber. You needed a bullpen arm. Boom. Brooks Raley. Got it. What's the next thing? Right-handed power bat. Right. Could that be Nelson Cruz? Come back? Sure. But if it's a trade option, because maybe it's a little bit too much expen- too, too expensive in the race of yeah. over an $80 million budget already, maybe Vidal Bruhan could get you that right-handed power bat from whoever X, right. X, X, X team is. That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, one last thing before we get to baseball trivia and name that war. So there is, besides the... Uh, monumental news of the Rule 5 minor league draft. Uh, There is a possibility, I don't know how much of a possibility, but there is a possibility that Ray's bench coach, Matt Quattraro, could land a managerial job this offseason. I know he's interviewed with the Athletics and the Mets, correct? Or at least he's... And in the past with the Padres too, didn't he? uh, I believe so. I believe so. But... Uh, my question, Ulysses, is do you think Quattraro lands a managerial job this offseason? I think the, the possibilities are high. I mean, okay. yeah, 100%. And and I think you can smell that from Timmons uh, getting a, a, a new position with the Brewers. Uh-huh. Uh, again, like we talked with Kenny Rosenberg, the Rays are a very good organization yes. right now. If, I mean, it's like the, they're they're in, like they're hip, right? And so, if you can poach talent from them, I think that they'll they'll do that. That's why I think the race did a very smart thing in getting Neander. Hey, buddy, stay here. Right, we got you. I think that that was very well done. Keep that for a little bit while the window of opportunity is wide open. I do think Kutraro Kuch- is going to leave. Yes. Okay. What do you think is more likely, him landing with the Athletics or the Mets? I think it would be best for him and better for the organization that he's going to if it would be the athletics. I agree. A hundred percent. Like it's it's the same kind of organizational theme. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, he's seen the growth within the race, which started in 2017 onwards. Yeah. I think that's exactly where they are right now. The A's, you know, taking a couple steps back. Right. I think the Mets' job is just, first of all, a hellhole. For a first-time manager, what would be a first-time manager with no No, name brand recognition? You need a guy like Dusty Baker to take that job. You need a guy that has so much, you know, cachet built in already that he can take some lumps and people would still back him up. Mm -hmm. I, I mean... No, no, no yeah. first time manager for, for the Big Apple. So here's the question. Okay, say that Quattraro is just such a hot candidate right now. Okay. Say he's offered, both organizations offer him the job. Okay. I assume the Mets would probably be offering him some more money and sure. some more security. But if you're Matt Quattraro mm-hmm. and you know you want to be a manager for a long time, seemingly, and want to enjoy what you're doing for a long time, right? say the Athletics come to you with an offer sheet and the Mets come to you with an offer sheet, who do you take? Which job do you take? I I think having one bad experience could yes. find you out of anybody's perspective mm-hmm. ever again. Right. Perspective or, or, or perspective list ever again. So get yourself into a position where your job is not going to be graded just on W's and L's. Right. Which I think is exactly what happens in New York. It's mm-hmm. that type of market. I don't care if it's the Mets. It's still that New York market. So I mean I, I would I would go for the A's job because you could grow there. Mm-hmm. They would understand that. They, yeah. they they just have a different cultural uh or uh, organizational culture that kind of fits more the one that you've been with with the yeah. Rays. Yeah, I agree. And for the record, I don't think that Quacharo is going to be offered the Mets job. I think it's going to be like a Buck Showalter, a Brad Osmus, maybe even Eduardo Perez. Like if if there's a 
a first. I, I feel like it's got to be a celebrity public figure you type of guy name. that, especially with we know how active Steve Cohen is. Yeah, yes. you have to have a name, and there's just so much, so much pressure, and so much that surrounds. A, we we talked about the dysfunctionality of the Mets, but you talk about you're you're dealing with an owner like Steve Cohen. You're dealing yeah. with an overbearing fa fan base. You're dealing with an overbearing media presence. You're dealing with, let's be honest, Matt Quattraro stepping into the Mets role with, okay, now you got to tell Max Scherzer what's what. You got to tell Francisco Lindor what's what. Are, are they going to respect you and, and are they going to buy what you're tough. selling them right away? I mean, he hasn't, with the Rays, he hasn't had to deal with a lot of big personalities and big veteran presence well, types like that. And, and again, with the Rays, he hasn't really had the chance to be even a two-inning manager yeah. because Kevin Cash never gets thrown out of yeah. the game. And just imagine. So like, he's never actually had to you know, yeah. be the guy. So Imagine I, the, game, the game six snafu uh -huh. happening with the Mets. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, no. no. Yeah. I agree. Uh, so I just wanted to, to Wait, throw that out there. I'm saying that there's a higher possibility of him leaving than staying. Are you also on that boat? Um, I look. I mean, I, I I've looked at some of the the managerial candidates and outside of like Buck Showalter and maybe one or two others, nothing really yeah throws me for a loop. So I think if if there was a time for him to get a job with say the Athletics, I think the time would be now. So I do I do think. That yes, he will get a job. He will get a managerial job, and it will be with the Athletics, and he'll be able to grow and mold that position a little bit. And yeah. uh, I think that would—that's a good kind of starting point, yes. as opposed to mm -hmm. stepping into a job like New York, which is just like man, it would talk about drinking from a fire hose every day. <sighs> yeah, no. I mean, Tori Lavulo, uh, you know, going from a big market to now Arizona Diamondbacks, and, and this be yeah. trash, but you never hear that he, his. His job is on the line, right? Yeah, you know, it's because that's that's what's expected, right? So right. I feel like the A's are expected to take a couple steps back, be you know, yeah, uh, in the up and coming, in then a couple of years. So I feel like that would be just yeah. the, the right spot for Cotraro. Again, I don't want him to leave, right? But I think it's likely for him to leave. And again, just like we said in segment one, when teams are poaching talent off you, it sucks, but at least it speaks to the fact that you have good talent in your organization and that's good yes it is yes it is so we'll see what happens with that i don't know uh if a decision will be made within the next couple of weeks or after the new year we'll wait and see on that uh it, it's just funny because it's like man we, we've never even seen matt quattaro do a press conference <laughs> no like and yeah. could you imagine him having to walk into I mean, have you have you even actually heard his voice more than a couple times no no no. He doesn't even, even get, uh, you know, interviewed in yeah. uh, Bally Sports. The only interviews he's done probably are like Spring hometown interviews. Or, yeah. Like, oh, okay, he went to ODU. So you're going to have the local uh, Hampton Road television station do a little feature on him. There and, you go. And I mean, really, the only thing that's, I would say, working in his favor for getting the New York job is that he's from New York. But that's not very much no. to go off of when... Like I would even think like David Wright would be a more likely possibility, or even Carlos Beltran. Maybe or that's what like they that. tweeted at that that D David Wright uh, Instagram post. Oh or yeah, Twitter post. Yeah. What happened there? It was him saying uh, Captain, like the, the social media, and then it, all in black and white. So people are like, "Oh my God, did David Wright, you know, pass away?" Oh yeah, it's just bad. Bad, bad post there by the social media team. Even the social media team from the Mets can't even get it right. It's it's completely a mess. In fact, I would go as far to say that, you know, the Mets, who they should hire is Evan Klosky. Evan Klosky as either manager or to do PR mitigation. Now, if you had green Skittles, would you put the green Skittles on Evan Klosky being the next manager for the Mets? Uh, I would not. Okay. I would not because I try to be smart with my money. <laughs> and if you want to be smart with your money and make some more money, you can throw some green Skittles at Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered all season long with more props, odds, and lines than ever before as football season continues to march to the playoffs. Bet Online remains your number one spot for all the sports action this season. So be sure to head over to their new updated desktop or mobile website to sign up today and receive a 50% welcome bonus 
on your first deposit. Just use the promo code Locked On L O C K E D O N. That's L O C K E D O N to receive that bonus. Bet online. It is the fastest and easiest way to bet on all of your favorite sports, and it's where the game starts okay ulysses it's time it's a friday All trivia and name that war you've got trivia for me and i have name that war for you what do you got well I, I, for this one i wanted to make it special and i made it my i made it myself i made this question up i went to savant and i used their search uh engine and and came up with this question can you name the top five race players in 2021 that hit the most home runs on an off-speed pitch. To those listening, off-speed would be either a changeup, a split finger, a fork ball, or a screwball. So, again, who was patient? Who hung back and hit the most home runs on an off-speed pitch? Name the top five guys. Oh, my gosh. And can you give me a number here as to, or is that? No, you just named me the five top guys. Uh, don't worry about how many home runs they hit. I know, but can you give me how many home okay. runs they hit, or is that too number much? Number one okay. had six home runs Okay. on an off-speed pitch, and number five had three home runs. Okay. Did number six have three home runs as well? Is there you know, four guys that's tied? Enough. With... That's enough okay. hints. I can't give you any more. Um... Well, I just got to go with uh, the obvious ones. I mean, who's hitting home runs on the Rays? Uh, okay. I will say Mike Zanino. Uh, he's number four on the list with three. Okay. Um, Brandon Lau. He's number three on the list with five. Okay. Austin Meadows. He's number two on the list with five. So you got the easy ones. Okay. Okay. Randy Arose Arena. Strike one. Really? Yep. Are you sure you want to check that again? 100% right. <laughs> um, I'll tell you how many he hit afterwards. Okay. I need two more. Uh, okay, I'm going to say this. This is probably strike two, but I'm going to say Nelson Cruz. Strike two. Oh, my gosh. Who had six? It was surprising to see number one and number five. I was like, huh, cool. Little, I learned something today. Mm. Okay. Uh, I'm, I'm tempted to go. I'm thinking of three names here, I think. I'm thinking of G-Man Choi. I'm thinking of Brett Phillips. And I'm thinking of Manny Margot. I will go with Manny Margot. Ooh, close. No, 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 no. no. It's good okay, good okay. One. He's number five on the okay. list with three. Very good. Very good. All right. Can you get um, number one? Man, this guy hit more home runs than I thought he would ever hit. So I will go with him. Uh, Brett Phillips. Steer right three. You're out of here. Oh my gosh. Sit down on the pine. You're Mr. killing me. Miami. Joey Wendell had six home runs. He had the most home runs on an off speed pitch. Can you believe that? Wow. I know. Isn't that crazy? And he only had 11 for the year, yeah. correct? And, 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 and by the way, Brett Phillips had nine on a fastball. Okay. So he geared up. So I guess the strategy is throw Joey Wendell heaters. If you don't want home runs, sure. Yeah. 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 Oh my Slug gosh. Slug pretty good against off-speed pitches. So yeah, that's the top five on off-speed home runs. Joey Wendell with six, Austin Meadows with five, Brendan Lau with five, Mike Zunina with three, and Manny Margot with three. You're pulling at the heartstrings here, bringing up Joey Wendell. I thought the I rule was we're not allowed to bring up players that the Rays trade or get rid of. 
Yeah, I didn't get that memo last night. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. So we, we can't mention Tommy Pham on the show anymore. That's part of it. We can't but mention Avi Garcia anymore. Couldn't Tommy Pham come back for a right-handed power bat DH spot? He could, but I don't think it's likely. That will be a segment probably next week. Brian Stark is throwing fire. Listener Brian Stark with some of the <laughs> yeah. ideas and topics. Uh, he has a really good one, which I think we'll have to get to yeah. next week. And again, if you are out there and you have a topic that – you want us to discuss or you have a question or a comment or really it doesn't even have to be about baseball if you have a question about our personal lives we're more than happy to answer that sure. uh locked on raise at gmail.com or you can reach out to us on instagram twitter whatever it may be uh okay so you uh, kind of stumped me with that trivia question i may or may not be able to stump you with this name that war question okay. the name that war player for this week is a tampa resident he is a uh, little league coach for a team based in Tampa. He, uh, I believe, he coaches his sons. I mean, that kind of makes sense. Um, it's going to be difficult. And you probably didn't know he was a Tampa resident until I told you that he was a Tampa resident. Okay. I, he lives, I think, in South Tampa in a huge multi-million dollar mansion. Uh, that's neither here nor there. But uh, the player is Travis Hafner. Travis Hafner. <laughs> Dude, I hate you. <laughs> what is Travis Hafner's career war? Okay. This is a tough people. This is a tough one, people. Travis Hafner. By the way, just the best <laughs> villain face for baseball. Like, if they actually wanted to cast guys for yes. that play baseball for a baseball movie, Travis Hafner would, would be a terrific villain. Mm -hmm. that he did to... briefly play for the Yankees, he so he fit in well there with his face. Yes. Uh, okay, let's do this. Travis Soulpatch Hafner. Um, okay, here we go. Here we go. Oh, my gosh. Um, let's say an eight-year career. Eight-year career where, like, four – years were very terrifying mm -hmm. so i'm gonna go with but no glove so you can't just go four war times four because 16 and then like what he doesn't get ding at all for for defense he must have so i'm gonna go with travis hafner's career baseball reference war to be 11. Uh, you are right about the defense. He also couldn't run the bases a lick, but. Am I off? You are off. A lot? Quite a bit. I'll give you one more guess. And I'm not going to say whether you're high okay. or low. Okay. Okay. You said multi million dollar house. Let's go. Money equals war, which is completely uh, not <laughs> correct at all. There's a lot of guys that'll tell you otherwise. Yeah. But for the sake of this game, I'm going to go with okay, fine. 23 war. Wow. that Your line of thinking was very much on point. His career war, according to baseball reference, 24.8. I was close the yes. second time. Uh, he had a 134 career OPS plus, 874 OPS, 498 slug, 376 on base percentage, 213 nice. homers, 273 batting average. And you were pretty much right on the mark about four terrifying seasons where yeah. he hit uh, 28, 33, 42, and 24 home runs, and he drove in 100-plus runs in those years. And Was that like 2006 to 2010? 2004 to 2007, oh, okay. give or take. In fact, one of those years, he slugged 659. Whoa, that is insane. Nasty. Yes, uh, and he did get a fat contract, but then he 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 really like slid after that. Yeah. Some I think shoulder injuries, and he was only playing. You know, he was on the the Kevin Kiermeyer plan where you where you play like ninety games a year. <laughs> Not anymore, baby. Kevin Kiermeyer puts up one twenty now. Let's yeah. go. Well, you know, there's always an outlier there every yeah. every once in a while. But no, Travis Hafner. I mean, solid, solid career. Solid man. career. He was with those Indians teams that. At least I remember Ulysses that were fun to play in the video games. Yeah. Like, oh, I've got that Brady Sa oh, Sizemore, uh, Johnny Peralta, yeah. Travis Hafner, Victor Martinez. Like, it was yeah. fun to play with those teams for sure. Um, so Travis Hafner, a couple little other notes here. Uh, he has the, this isn't surprising, he has the most home runs for a player born in North Dakota. 
So he did. Wow. He was born and went to high school in North Dakota. And get this. He was the valedictorian of his high school class of how many? This is North Dakota, mind you. Uh, the town is uh, uh, Sykeston, North Dakota. The metropolis that is Sykeston, North Dakota. His high school. Okay. My high school senior class was about 400 people. Freedom High School. Yes. So I'm thinking 80. 80. His high school class. 80. Class, of 80. Eight. Eight students. No, you're kidding. <laughs> yeah. He, his. His school didn't have a high school baseball team, so he had to play American Legion ball. Okay, if you're watching us on YouTube, I want you to comment how many people were on your graduating class in, yeah. uh, in senior year in high school. That's unbelievable. That has to yeah. be the lowest ever heard. Yeah. Now, I, I worked in Oklahoma for a year, and there were some really, really small senior classes and small schools there, but eight is pretty darn how, low. How big was yours? Uh, in Indiana? Uh, I mean, we started my freshman year, we had 600, 650, but we, uh, you know, a lot of dropouts. Yeah, that happened. <laughs> After those four years, uh, it was around 450, I think. Okay, okay. So you're in the same ballpark. And okay. I don't want to brag, but I did finish 18th in my class. Top hey, 20. Uh, look at that, Mr. Kevin White. Anywho. Uh, Race front office. Did you listen to that? Yeah. 18th in high school. Let's go. Gander, Matt Silverman. Let's get Stu that Sternberg, going, baby. Let's go. Brian Ald, Brain come tank. on. Come on. Offer me a job. Already. All I'm asking for is six figures. It's not that's, that. It's not that much. It's not that I mean, much. they're asking more for the stadium, so. <laughs> <laughs> that is something we will talk about next week. There are some intriguing developments. On Monday note. will be stadium talk. So if you hate yes. stadium talk, still still tune in and give yes. us that download and li that listen and that view on YouTube. Uh, there we go. Yeah. yeah. So there's your uh, Travis Hafner name that war. Proud Tampa resident. Now, uh, Snowbird from North Dakota moving to, to Tampa. Oh, my gosh. All right. Uh, thank you again for making the Locked on Race podcast your first listen every day. Now make your second listen, the Locked on Bets podcast. That is also free and available on all platforms. Hope you all have a wonderful day. Stay safe, and we will talk to you next week.